Now, what are convolutional codes and how is it different from block codes? So, in a block code, we have seen that we have an n bit code which is generated from a block of k input digits within a given time interval. Right? So, within a given time interval, the n code bits are dependent on the k message bits. But whereas in case of convolution codes, what happens? A block of n code digits which are generated by an encoder. So you have a convolutional encoder. So the output n is produced by a convolutional encoder is not only dependent on the k message bits at that time, but is also dependent on the previous n minus k block of message bits. So therefore, here the value of k and of course n is pretty much smaller. So here what is the basic difference between a convolutional code and a block code? The output n is produced by a convolutional encoder which is not only dependent on the given k message digits at that time interval but is also dependent on the preceding n minus 1 blocks of message. Right? So now to find the output of a convolutional encoder there are two approaches one is known as the time domain approach the other one is known as transform domain approach so let's take a problem and let us see how we can find the output of a convolutional encoder using time domain approach in this video segment now given a convolutional encoder n comma k comma n so what is n so n would be the output or it also defines the number of modulo 2 adders here right so this is n so n would basically define the number of outputs so here there is a problem i have defined a problem here the encoder diagram has been given so here what is n so we find that the number of modulo 2 adders is 2 you have one modulo 2 adder here and we have another modulo 2 adder so n would be 2 here in this case so n basically defines the number of outputs so therefore it also would be equal to the number of modulo 2 adders so k would be the number of inputs entering the given convolutional encoder at a given time so usually it would be 1 so here I have the message D which enters the convolutional encoder so here we have the data that is the message enters the convolutional encoder bit by bit so k would be equal to 1 in this example consider k would be equal to 1 next n would be the number of stages of shift register or it also would be equal to the number of flip flops present in the convolutional encoder so I have m which is also equal to 2. NL of course happens to be the number of bits in the message sequence. So let us define the message d which is equal to 10011. So this is the message d here. So I need to find the output. Now to find the output using time domain approach. It is easier to define a matrix g. So the generator matrix is of order l cross n into l plus n all right so what is l l of course is 5 so l happens to be the length of the message sequence so i have 5 bits in the message sequence so l is 5 so what is the order of the generator matrix for this convolutional encoder given so the matrix the dimensions of the generator matrix would be 5 cross so I have n is 2 into l is 5 plus 2. So this is 5 plus 2 is 7 into 2 is 14. So I have 5 cross 14. So I have 5 rows and 14 columns. Now how do I fill in the generator matrix? How do I get the generator matrix is the next question. So we are solving the problem using time domain approach so here to find the generator matrix remember you have the top adder and we have the bottom adder so the generator sequence given for the top adder 
let me define it as G1. So for the top adder, how many inputs do I have? I have 1, 2 and 3. So let me call this as G1 of 1, G1 of 2 and G1 of 3. And here I have only two inputs. So let this be G2 of 1, 2 of 2, 2 of 3. So here since there is no connection, that would be 0. Right? So I have G of 1, which is nothing but G1 of 1, G1 of 2, and G1 of 3. Okay? So what does that define? So G1 of 1 indicates this connection. G1 of 2 indicates this connection to the top adder. G1 of 3 indicates this connection to the top adder. And if there is a connection, it is represented by 1. So that would be 1, 1, 1. And similarly for the bottom adder, it would be G2 of 1, G2 of 2, and G2 of 3. So very simple. I have a connection here, so this is 1, no connection 0, and a 1 here. So very simple, right? So you identify how many connections you have to the top as well as to the bottom adder. If I have two flip-flops, so definitely you can have a maximum possible of 3, isn't it? So I have 1, 1, 1, and here it is, 1, 0, 1. Now how do I fill in the generator matrix? Now the output C, how do you take output C? one from the top adder, one from the bottom adder, isn't it? So therefore, to find the generator matrix G, I take one bit from the top adder, one bit from the bottom adder, right? So I have one, one. Next, again, one, the next one, one, zero. And then again, next one, one, one. Right? So I, I have 5 rows and 14 columns. So with this, I have filled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns. So I have a remaining of 8. So what do I do? Just include zeros. Right? So I have included here 8 zeros. So I have 14 columns. 1, 1. Next is 1, 0. Next is 1, 1. Then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? So you have 14 columns. So I have 7 pairs of bits, 14 columns. I need 5 rows, so I've just completed with 1 row. For the next one, what do I do? I put a 0 here for the first two and shift them. So I get 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then zeros. So basically you shift, and then you have, you input zeros here and shift these two to the next position 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then again zeros. Then again shift the data here, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then again shift right, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this happens to be the generator matrix. Alright, so now the output C, what is the output C? So the output C, matrix C, is nothing but matrix D. So D was 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Right? It is D into C. So D is, D is 1 cross 5 matrix. It's 1 cross 5. And what about C? C is 5 cross 14. So when you, when you multiply these two matrices, I get... C, which is 1 cross 14. Alright? So therefore, I have D, which gets multiplied with this generator matrix, and I perform modulo 2 addition, of course. So let me write D here. So I have 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So multiply this with the first column. So I have 1 into 1 is 1, and then all of them are zeros. So I get 1. The next one, I have 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 multiplied by this. So I have 1 into 1 plus all of them are 0. So again, I get 1. Alright? Next. So when I multiply this with the columns, I must remember that the rows 2 and 3 always get multiplied with 0. So the first bit gets multiplied with the first row. 
the second bit here gets multiplied with 2, the third bit gets multiplied with row 3. So since 0 gets multiplied with row 2 and row 3, it is always 0. Okay? And then to write the answer very easily, count the number of 1s in row 1, 4 and 5. If you have odd number of 1s, you write 1. If you have even number of 1s, you write 0 because we are performing modulo 2 addition, isn't it? So now these two rows will anyway be multiplied with 0. So I do not, I, I need not consider these two rows. I only have to consider the first row, row 4 and row 5. Okay, because I am multiplying 1 with the first row, 1 with row 4, 1 with row 5. And that is dependent on the message. So if I change the message, of course it will be different. So just count the number of 1. So this is very easy. If you have to solve the problem in the examination, you save a lot of time, isn't it? So count the number of 1s in row 1, 4 and 5. So 1, I, I only have 1, 1, so I write 1 here. Then again count the number of 1s. There are no 1s, so it is 0. Alright, so next, what about the third one? I again count the number of 1s. So you have one here. There's only a single one. Next, again single one, so I get one one. Next, count the number of one. So you have one, a single one. So again I have a one here. Then again you count the number of one. So the zero one zero single one. So I write a one here. Next, one one. So two ones. So two ones, I write a zero. So again, count the number of ones. So zero, zero, one. A single one, so I get zero, one here. Next, count the number of ones. Zero, one, one. So two ones, I write a zero. And for this column, again, count the number of ones. Zero, one, zero. A single one, so I write a one here. Here, zero, zero, one. A single one, I get a one. Again, 0, 0, 1, I get a single one. So this is the final output C. So the final output C is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So this is how we've got the output of the convolutional encoder using time domain approach. Okay. So this is as far as finding the output of a convol uh, convolutional encoder using time domain approach. So similarly, we can also find the output using transform domain approach, which we should see in the next video segment. I'll consider the same example and we will check whether we get the same output as we have got in the time domain approach. So do not forget to watch the next video segment where I'll be solving the same problem using transform domain approach. To view all the other videos in information theory and error control coding, Click on the i icon or go through the playlist information theory and coding and do not forget to like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.